Well, the full moon this weekend is being called the super moon by some because it will be the closest full moon of the year, about 221,000 miles away from Earth. But rumors are also swirling on the Internet that this event will disrupt Earth's climate patterns, cause earthquakes and volcanoes, and may have even had something to do with a recent quake and tsunami in Japan. So what's fact and what's fiction? Alan Pesch, director of the Barlow Planetarium, sets us straight this morning, and I want to thank him for coming up. Good uh, morning. Here. Hi, Alan. Tell us about this supermoon. What is true about this? Well, every month, the moon goes through a m monthly cycle, which is where the word month comes from. And it makes a close, closest approach every month and a furthest approach every month, an apogee and a perigee. And on this full moon, this, uh, this month, it's going to be at its full position at its closest approach. So there's going to be some extra tides. The tides are going to be a little higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not going to cause earthquakes. There is a tidal effect that happens on Earth. The ground does move very slightly. We, we can measure that. But there's been never, ever any correlation between the moon phase and earthquakes. And there have been studies on this. Well, it sounds really good. We know the moon causes the tides. Mm -hmm. And anybody who lives on an ocean coast knows that. And it would seem to make sense that it would do on the land, too, and it does. And the geologists kind of thought, you know what, this might cause something. Geologists did that hypothesis and studied it. And about 1%, 1 percent, 1 to 2 percent of the earthquakes that have uh -huh. occurred have occurred on a full moon. Okay. About 3 percent should on average. <laughs> I see. I All mean, right, so, so even it's even less, yes. Um, and you, you uh, sent us a picture of the, the moon um, and how it will differ in size um, uh, from today, the, the perigee and the apogee. So this is the perigee, right? Yes. And obviously it's bigger when you put them next to each other. But really, will we be able to see that with the naked eye? You know, if you are a really, really good astute observer and really measured stuff with your telescope and how big it looked in your eyepiece, you would be able to detect this. And this image was actually created by an astronomer taking pictures all through the year. Uh, just comparing it, you won't be able to detect it with your eye. So, so it'll be a nice sight regardless, right? Well, I, and I would suggest on Saturday night, really cool things going to occur because Sunday is actually the equinox. Saturday night, as the sun's going down in the west, and if you have a road in your neighborhood that goes east and west, yeah. the sun will be going down, lined up exactly with that road oh, almost. Cool. And the moon, if you turn around, yeah. will be coming up on the other side of that road in the east at Very the same neat. time. So that's kind of cool at the equinoxes. I like watching that. And then if you go out next month on the next full moon, it's going to be further north ah. and further south. And so it's going to be really interesting. And it's a fun thing to watch as the earth moves through its seasons. Do you have anything special this weekend at the Barlow? Well, we we're, we're, we're always do our shows on our weekends, okay. and we're going to be watching this. And, of course, we're also promoting that it's the equinox on Sunday, right around yeah. supper time. So uh, from that point onward, uh, the sun will be even getting later and later, and we can see that occurring, occurring already. Yeah, we're, and it's almost equal day and night, but depending on the refraction or reflection right. of the, the sun, uh, it's a little bit longer or shorter. Uh, one thing, you hear about this theory uh, around this time too. Can you really balance an egg uh, uh, during the spring equinox or the vernal equinox? You can balance an egg on the spring equinox, but what they don't tell you is you can do it on any other day <laughs> as well. Uh, it's actually a Chinese tradition that we don't even know when it started. The books that, th that we found this written in don't even have copyrights because nobody thought to put copyrights in it. It actually goes back to World War II when we found mm -hmm. out about it. And uh, a reporter actually r sent the, the information back and it turns out this was cool. Everybody got involved with it. Uh, but it turns out the Chinese have been doing it a month ahead of the oh, equinox well, for so. thousands of years. So they kind of proved themselves wrong. Well, Alan, thanks for joining us. So once again, I, the, the, we don't really have any, con there's no connection between the super moon and maybe even this, the vernal equinox this weekend and, and, and anything that does happen, right? Right. I, I would be slightly concerned for Japan right now because yeah. they had the tsunami. And they, a lot of their seawalls came down. Uh -huh. So this happened during Hurricane Hugo as well. The hurricane came in, took out all the sea barriers, and then the next month was a, a full moon at, at, uh, at, at perigee as so the well. Tides were the tides came oh, in again wow. and flooded so we'll everything. So yeah. Japan w may have a, a, a slight additional flooding issue with this. Ellen, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for coming. We'll be back with more on Good Day Wisconsin. Stay tuned.